Hi, I'm Michael Waddell, and on this video, we're gonna be going over some turkey calling tips and techniques. I'm excited to show y'all what kind of calls I have here in front of me, why I use them, and how I use them in the woods. Well, let's start with the all-time favorite. We'll go right to the more complex, which is the mouth diaphragm or mouth call. Um, the cool thing about a mouth call, obviously you hear it said, you know, it's hand free, it's hands free. And in my personal opinion, based on the different cuts and techniques and blends of latex and prophylactics, we have got some tremendous ability to mimic exactly the tones and the sounds of these hen turkeys. And really, the sky's the limit of what you can do with these calls. What you will find with a mouth call, you have to find the ones that fit you right, that the way the air flows between your tongue and the roof of your mouth the way it flows good and sounds good, the way you can control. So we'll start with something a little more of a combo cut. So a mouth call, first of all, is just a piece of aluminum frame. They're made out of plastic and they have latex, are basically um, you know, a, a way that you can use your tongue on the bottom of this call to force this air through that or under it and to give you a different tone. Anytime you use a mouth call, you wanna make sure the reeds are loose and the shorter reeds are down. So when you put it in your mouth, It's a seal that seals on the roof of your mouth and that tongue goes on the bottom of these diaphragms, which the air between your tongue and these reeds go over in the way that air, much like a, a trumpet or a reed that's in a, uh, you know, an, uh, some type of instrument, it basically makes a sound and the fluctuation and these cuts give you the high pitch, the low range, as well as that rasp. So one thing to remember about a mouth call is, I think everybody gets intimidated quick. Find a call that you can quickly make sounds. You don't have to worry about what kind of sound, you don't even have to worry about making turkey sounds, but get it to where you can make a racket, I call it, and you're comfortable with it. So get that call in your mouth. It's important to know once you start making noises, it should not tickle, it shouldn't be ticklish. So if you're having that problem, then you haven't either found the right call or it's not properly in your in your mouth. Once you get to the point where you're comfortable making any kind of racket or sound, then you can start mastering the sounds that will need to be more better mimicked to make those hen turkey sounds. Because mostly the sounds we're trying to make is the hen turkey uh, during the spring of the year. Obviously a lot of people love the fall turkey hunt. That's a whole nother plethora of different sounds and calls in the turkey language. Keep in mind what you're trying to master is not just making these sounds, but to learn how to have a conversation with this call back to the hens that you're talking to or the gobbler that you're talking to to try to bring within range. So first of all, get it in your mouth. And what you'll find, once you get comfortable making sounds, not only are you gonna learn how to make better turkey sounds, but there's a plethora of things from elk sounds to, to squealing to rabbit in distress. You'll be able to do all kinds of things on this mouth diaphragm. But it's important to know, so if we dissect each call that a hen turkey makes, one of the most important calls is a, is a yelp. So first of all, dissecting what a yelp is. A yelp is just a notes, four or five notes put together, and it's just a yuck, 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 yuck. A lot of times when a turkey, they'll do it subtle, they'll do it aggressive, but a lot of times that's the turkey's way of communicating. It's the first hello, it's the first way that they can you know, set the tone in the flock. And a lot of times if a gobbler is, is listening, he's listening for that hen that's yelping, out in the distance, his hen's trying to find company, and you reverse in nature, as it always says, typically this hen, once that turkey gobbles, is coming to that gobbler. But in this case, we're trying to reverse nature. So that's been said, but that's the truth, and that's what makes turkey hunting so difficult to call this gobbler in with a mouth call or any call. So what we want to start with is try to get that high pitch uh, first part of that yelp. Again, the way you get to this is you can find different calls that work for you. So we want to start and try to get that high pitch. And then after you got that part of it, um, you want to try to get the, the lower part of it, that two-tone, that rusty wheel as I call it. You run that together. So when you're trying to find a mouth call that works for you, first of all, 
You don't want one that's ticklish. You want to seal properly on the roof of your mouth and learn how to get those noises. Now, the cool thing about different cuts, where well, this one is your classic combo cut, this is one we call the Georgia Peach. This is basically more like what we call a bat wing. And so on a bat wing, you got more flexibility on the side to get that higher pitch. Because what gives you that rasp, that ah, is that uh, air that's going and that vibration on that top read of that call that's cut. Real similar in tone and sound is this particular call, which is a bat wing, and it might work better for you. And this is a Georgia Peach. Hear that? Now, first of all, right when you pick these calls up, these calls here are just out of the box, so they're not even really broke in that well. They'll take on a life of itself. Once this latex, it, it, it basically stretches, it dries, it stretches, and it dries, and sometimes it'll take a whole nother tone, and you'll be able to get that more yearning and that little wave. My buddy Ricky Joe used to always like that back draw, he called it. If you listen to Walter Parrott, if you listen to Matt Van Sice, um, th- these guys that call such amazing, like Dave Owens, they have such a life and feeling. And in my opinion, the best way to get that call or that sound is from a mouth diaphragm. However, they're the hardest call to master. But once you master them, the good thing is whether you're making a purr or a yep, you can do it hands-free. If you need to put a different inflection, maybe bend the call backwards to where you're trying to make it sound like further away, you can start off You can do all kind of different, basically flexible tone adjustments based on making it sound like several turkeys. You can get aggressive, you can cut down on the call, or you can call really loud. So basically the good thing about the flexibility of a mouth call, once you master it, it's hands-free, You've got inevitably no different than what a good singer becomes. You have such a wide array of tone and pitches and cadence that you can use. And when we talk about cadence, the most important thing about turkey call, in my opinion, is you want to create this illusion and you got to have the inflection and the ability to have a conversation that entices this gobbler in this case and or in many cases you're trying to fit into this flock with the hens. So depending on what's being said or you hear, you're going to adjust your calling to that. A mouth call gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, A prime example, early in the morning, a lot of times turkeys, before they fly down, they're not just blazing away and yelping loud or or cutting. They might start with something subtle and soft, more like raindrop yelps or really soft tree yelps. It sounds something like this. As the morning heats up, they'll start talking to each other and get a little bit more excited. A lot of times you hear that and that's the old fly down cackle, things are on the ground. At that point, if you hear these sounds, well, first of all, if a gobbler's gobbling amongst this, you know they're hinned up. So at this point, with your mouth call, not only you're trying to get that gobbler fired up, but he's already fired up. They could be four or five hens around him. So at this point, you're taking this mouth call and you're trying to adjust into this flock, which keep in mind, just like a home, just like an office, there is structure, there is a pecking order, and it's important for you to be listening to all the subtle sounds. And so all you're trying to do is to fit in. So based on the aggression of what's being said, based on if the gobbler is paying attention and just gobbling at you, not necessarily the hens, depending on the space between this gobbler, where you're at position between the hens, or maybe the gobbler's behind you and you got the hens. So you got a lot of obstacles potentially based on what you're observing and hearing as to what you're trying to do. But the number one thing on a hen up turkey with a mouth call, I'm just trying to fit in and to understand this social structure. 
So if I'm having hens that are just blazing away, all I'm wanting to do is to be non-aggressive, the exact opposite. I'm not trying to make this hen any more mad. I certainly hope the gobbler feels that I'm sexy and sounding pretty good. I hope he thinks I got on some fishnets and a little mini skirt. And I hope he decides to divert from all this attention he's getting from these ladies and somehow comes to me. But the biggest thing I'm trying to be at this point, I'm trying to be a girl's girl, man. I'm trying to fit in with this flock of hens. So a lot of times rather than blaze away, I'm calling softer, I'm purring, I may be giving little soft clucks. I'm listening to what those hens are telling to me. Even if they're aggressive back to me, I'm responding with more gentle and just like, hey man, just let me kind of chill out. I'd like to come in here. Or by the way, feel confident to come by me. So a lot of times it's softer yips. A lot of times, depending on the situation, I might go with a little assembly lip, yep, that maybe gives these hens a thought that maybe I'm a younger hen that maybe got separated from the flock at roost. Again, you're just trying to draw these scenarios up. At this point, maybe I'm trying to let these turkeys think I'm a little lost and to come find me. Keep in mind, it's Mother Nature, and so they're very curious. They're trying to understand where is this hen? Where is she from? Why is she here? I don't think she was there last night. Why are they there now? So you don't want to overcall, but you also want to give them enough curiosity, no different than if there was somebody outside of your home when you woke out, woke up, what would give you the ability to feel confident to walk out to evaluate the situation? So at this point, I'm not even calling to the gobbler. I'm calling to the hen. Now, so let's reverse that, and it's just a long gobbler. A lot of times, if he's looking for love and he has any kind of dominance and he's by himself, it ain't going to take much. I would recommend just soft calling, get him excited, listen to his gobble, and respond. If he gobbles at my call, just a real standard little yelp, a little small cutting at the end. He hits that. I might check him one more time. Respond back to him like, I heard you, big boy, and I really want some company. You got to come check me out. You ain't going to believe it. So at that point, I hit him hard. So once that starts coming, that gobble closes in, you can finish them with a soft call. In that case, calling the turkey becomes very simple. But if you're trying to fit in with those hens, use this call to manipulate the hen, give them an opportunity to know that you're around. Again, those assembly ups might sound like this. A lot of times what that's telling the other hens is you could be a little lost, you could be out of place, and you're basically begging for company. You're not trying to aggressively be this domineering type of hen. You're trying to fit in. So you're convincing these turkeys to come by you. At this point, again, you're not talking to the gobbler. You're talking to the hens. But guess what? If you get the hens to come by you, guess what? Big Daddy's going to be in the rear. So that's a few tips that I would use when it comes to mouth call. And the reason I started with this the most diverse call that a man can master or a woman. When you master a mouth call, it's the pinnacle of turkey calling. Even getting to your kiki runs that you use in the fall, again, you've got a wide range. It might sound like this, a kiki run or a kiki. A lot of times, a lot of hens, even early in the season, I found that a kiki can be really effective in early spring. Again, a turkey gets out of place when you're trying to, to basically manipulate the whole flock to come to you. Sometimes a kiki is a good sound that they use to try to find back. You hear poults using the kiki. The first noise that a turkey will make, or a poult when he's born, is usually kiki into his mom. Just a <laughs> They're almost whistling. So a kiki is something that's embedded, and especially the nurture of a mother when they hear another hen kiki and a lot of times they do want to have a sense of community so i still will use that especially early in the season but again the biggest thing i want to tell you is when you learn and get the perfect call there's nothing that you can't do from clucks and purrs to cutting of an excited hen to yelping soft yelp aggressive yelping assembly calls everything you can do on a mouth call and that's important to even though we're starting with the pinnacle of all calls the mouth diaphragm that's why to master this is the hardest, but we're not gonna stop it just talking about the mouth call. We're gonna talk about how these friction calls coincide and how you can also use your friction calls 
to get you to a better place in using this diaphragm. So picking up these friction calls, which when we think about friction, what defines friction is the sound that they make. So it's basically friction between this lid, our striker, and this box, and it causes a sound. That sound comes from friction. So hence the name on a box call, you get that friction. Same on what we call the pot calls, the glass or slates. The friction between this striker, whether it's diamond wood, whether it's hickory, between this situation, a roughed up glass, in a nice sound chamber, in this case a mahogany pot, it gives you a that's just friction. Like <laughs> dragging your nails across the chalkboard, so to speak. But these calls are engineered to make it really simple. So obviously, getting back to what we talked about in a, in a call, again, you have gotta remember the fundamental sound, especially if we start with a yup, which I think is the hello of the turkey language. You want to find that high, You found it right there. And then as you're making these ovals or circles, you're just bringing it till you get that drop. All right, so this is a basic friction call. The good thing about a pot call or say a box call, they're very easy to master. And they're also easy to adjust the tone. So you can make several calls in one by switching your striker. So notice this. Solid call, you can yup in a turkey. Switch to a diamond wood type of striker. Same call. <laughs> Took on a whole different life. It definitely has a higher screech, a lot more decibels. Obviously, it'd be a good choice in trying to maybe locate a turkey or if you want to get a little more aggressive. Again, a hickory. <laughs> a very clean sound. This particular striker on this call gives a very clean sound. Now you'll move over into, say, your slate call, which in this case, you have a synthetic sound chamber versus a wood sound chamber. You have a slate friction surface versus a glass surface. Same thing, most every call is gonna come with a little bit of, you know, either sandpaper or some type of something to rough that call up. You want to create a few grooves. I personally, versus aimlessly roughing up my whole, um, you know, surface of, of my pot call, I find one particular area. Now what you will find is, even though you might find a good sound, say here, you might can rough up this side and get a totally different sound. You might can move more to the middle, get a solid, more of a lower tone, and even the way you grip this striker, the way you hold this pot, everything's gonna change the inflection of tone. So what you have here, you can't look at this as a turkey call. You got to look at this as a musical instrument. Uh, being that this is a musical instrument, it's no different than playing a guitar and if you're trying to bend the string uh, or you're trying to find some, some different tones and, and the way you can put your fingers and you hear, you know, Ted Nugent used to tell me all the time playing a guitar, he's like, brother, it's in your fingers, man, it's in your fingers. Here, it's in your hands, it's in the call, it's in the way you grip it. You can manipulate this if you want to hold it more flat. <laughs> Softer call. As soon as I open this up, and I don't know how well it'll come across on the microphone, but it changes the whole tone. <laughs> then if you take maybe this diamond wood striker. I don't know if it picks up, but it's more, once again a higher pitch. It gives you a little bit more embellishment on that rasp that comes at the bottom end of that rollover. <laughs> so once again, just to help people not to forget, when you're trying to make that hen turkey noise, a lot of times if you got, <laughs> that's amateur, that ain't a hen turkey, it's just a. <laughs> it starts with a very distinct high point, which is the key, it's the key of a hen turkey that And I've always liked to think about this, and my buddy Ricky Joe Bishop, who's a two-time Grand National Championship winner, he used to always tell me, man, when we were practicing, like, remember the rusty wheel? That yuck, 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 yuck. And once you get that, <laughs> and you run it together, you got the call. Once again, easy to manipulate, easy to use, easy to master, 
And also, once you get this and you're feeling it like it's your newfound guitar, if you get one or two of these pot calls, you can literally mess with it. Now, you might drive, you know, your, your, your roommate's crazy, your wife or your girlfriend crazy, or your mama, but it takes somebody to persevere through listening to all these calls or maybe do it by yourself. I remember, man, I used to call a lot of times. It might be 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'd get up and practice and just do anything I could by myself. I'd go out in the woods by myself in the dark because I want to master these suckers. But what I loved about the friction calls, everything is easy to do. You know, if you're somebody who got intimidating because you never could purr on a mouth call, you could always purr easy on a slate. Depending on how aggressive or how soft, If it's the cutting of a sighted hen, which if you think about cutting, cutting is a very important call. Easy to do on these friction calls. In this case, this, this slate. Think of Morse code. Always a pack, 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 pack. So. A lot of times on, you know, the audio to come across, you know, real, real poppy and pingy. But the tone in that is really nice and rich as I'm sitting here listening to it. And then learn how to use that cutting to, to blend right into maybe a, a, a yelp. Also, what I love about these friction calls or these pot calls, if it's early in the morning and you're trying to imitate those, those hen yelps and, and really subtle, soft calls that a hen might make, you can get them easy. You can even get a lot of subtle yearning in that. Um, I'm gonna switch and put these calls down, this pot call, and go to my probably all-time favorite friction call, which is a box call. Um, in my personal opinion, anybody can pick up a good sounding box call that's engineered well, that has the correct you know, uh, balance, and, 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 and when it's built into this call, it, it's amazing how good they sound. Again, you get that easy high, and then that rollover, which is basically the weight of the lid. A lot of times people think you need to bear down on this. Really, most of these good calls, like this particular call here, is engineered that the weight of the lid is the per proper amount of weight to give that sound. And you can hold them a lot of different ways. You know, I always kind of hold a call like this because I can hear the sound coming at me. That sound is as solid and as most realistic to any natural hen that might be out there. Uh, a point I always try to make on a box call, you can so many times be out there in the woods and you can hear what you think is a hen. And you'll quickly think, holy cow, is that a hen turkey or is that somebody down there with a box call? So the only thing that would give it away that it could be a hunter that somebody gets out of rhythm. So we'll use this box call to talk about rhythm and cadence. The biggest thing, when you're thinking about a hen turkey, turkeys are just like you and I. Some of us talk high, some talk low, some talk middle range, some people get way low, some people talk excited, some people scream, some people talk real soft, some people you can't really hear. So when it gets down to the, the noises and the sounds that you're trying to make, you can become the turkey you want to become. And a lot of times, keep in mind, you are a manipulator, so you become the turkey that you think this gobbler wants to hear. That is why I t take many different calls. That is why I have friction calls, I have mouth calls, because I'm trying to give this gobbler, in this case, exactly what he wants. I don't want to give him what he don't want. I want to become this hand that he really feels comfortable with, maybe somebody he knows. And so in that, there's a lot of different ways to say hello. If I were to walk up to you and say, hey man, what's up? All right, well, that's, hey man, what's up? But if I say, what's up? Same conversation, but I'm telling you something a little different in the way I'm greeting you. The same with a hen. Let's just say a lot of times if you're easing into a situation, all right, and maybe you get a turkey to gobble at a crow call, a shot gobble, just a <laughs> So now this turkey just shot gobbled this call. Now you got a blank slate because guess what? He just gave his position you have not did anything in a sexual nature through this call to want him to start coming that way. 
He's at a place he wants to be. At this point, maybe he's still with hens. Maybe he's by himself. And so you're sitting there now, and now you can approach it. So now your first thing, you got to say hello. How do you want to say hello? That depends. There's the gamble we make, and that's the place of turkey hunting that's so fun to me. So a lot of times, if I got him to gobble and I go up and sit, a lot of times at that point, what I will do is keep in mind this turkey's gobbling. He's hoping to attract hens. Those hens, when you hear him gobbles, walks to him. A lot of times what I'll do, and I realize that this turkey might be 200 yards away, and if I'm really trying to get within 100 yards to start working him, a lot of times when I get to that, say, 120 to 30-yard mark where I'm trying to get set up, rather than set up and then start calling, I will actually get about 10 to 20 yards from where I really want to sit. And if this turkey gobbles or not, I'll just say, Just give them a couple calls, and so I'm walking. So what I'm trying to tell this turkey is, I heard you gobble, big boy. You sound like a handsome devil up here, probably strutting. I thought I even heard you spitting drum. But as I'm getting close, I'm going to go ahead and move with this call that I'm making, basically telling you how handsome you are, and I cannot wait to say uh, to, to get close to you, but I want to say hello by just... That's letting me know, or letting that gobbler know that I'm excited to get to know you. If I'm walking and I'm calling, if he says nothing, I'm still not discouraged. But if all of a sudden, just based on that subtle, soft, kind of halfway excited hen yell, he gobbles at me. At that point, that's when I'm immediately responding to him. Not trying to make him respond, he made me respond. And immediately when this turkey gobbles, I'm taking this box call and just saying, A lot of times I'll take that, sit by that tree, many times, never do I have to make another call. Because what I did there, when he responded to me out of that soft call, I responded back. And I went from like, hey, I was looking for you, you sound handsome. He gobbled, then all of a sudden, boy, when he gobbles at me, I'm telling him everything like, you ain't gonna believe it. Oh my goodness. Man, I just went to the cosmetologist. Uh, whatever that is, you get your hair did, I got my nails did, and I cannot wait to hang out all day with you. I'm telling all of these things. It becomes this crazy, almost X-rated version of what I'm trying to tell him. So he's sitting there gobbling, strutting. Keep in mind, this is a turkey that's sitting on this ridge who's waited all year for this beautiful April day to have an opportunity to breed and to helpfully help pass down his genetics so there will be more turkeys the next year. So I told him everything he wanted. And so in this, I'm telling him this at a high level of manipulation because I'm trying to reverse nature. So when I sit down, and keep in mind, that's where you use the least of your advantage. You're walking, you're making a noise. There is a call with the call. As you're making that noise, he hears you walking, he hears you moving, you sit down. Holy cow, the illusion is painted. Now let's get into why all of this from the way you walk to the way you run this call is important. There's a cadence. If you're in the woods and all of a sudden this is what you hear. We've all heard it. You know, I hear these folks talking about hunting public ground or private. You hear all this stuff. But at the end of the day, that does no good turkey cadence. Now I can take this same call and if I run it with the weight of the lid, well, you might love that tone or might not like it. That gobbler's the same way, but one thing that's undeniable is turkey rhythm, is turkey cadence. So you think, well, I hadn't mastered that box call. Don't have to. Say if I put more pressure on the lid and it don't sound as good. Still sounds good to me, but the one thing I kept was turkey cadence. If he gobbles, I'm not. I'm not doing that. That's me getting excited. That's not a hen getting excited. That's me trying to give him a little more loud, give him a little bit more woody to woodpecker and see if that might make him excited. Don't do you no good. I ain't gonna say it don't work. I'm just saying you're still not following the principles of a turkey language. All of a sudden, if, if I say, hey girl, what's up? And she says, nothing. Won't you, you know, well, what am I gonna say? I'm like, if I start singing some crazy Barry Manilow song that makes no sense, well, she might just think I'm handsome enough to wish it. But deep down, she's going to think, man, this dude's crazy. So don't go crazy when you get a response and all of a sudden you put out a little sweet yelp. And then there's, and then you say, 
That gobbler sitting back like, whoa, what's going on? I know there's some aggressive hens, but this one done went crazy. Last time I went and responded to something like that, man, I got some, you know, six shot in my breast or something. I don't know. Keep with the rhythm and keep with your strategy and keep turkey cadence and rhythm. And what happens, think about this. If somebody's using good turkey rhythm, even if their tone and their sound isn't perfect in quality, guess what? Even you question, is that a turkey or is that a caller? But what gives it away for you is... You might hear that, and if you're a veteran turkey hunter, I can tell you what you're going to say. He's like, man, that sounds like a dude on a box call. But at that point, even if you've been in the woods all your life, do you have the confidence to walk down to where you hear that sound and not flush off a hen? You can't guarantee because a hen sounds so much like a box call. But if you hear this, you're going to know somebody's poaching on your land. So if you know that somebody's poaching, somebody's down there calling on a box call, guess what? That long spur turkey's probably going to figure it out too. So one last tip I want to use when it comes to high-level calling is how you can use your box call to make your mouth call sound better because I've always thought if you think about strumming a guitar and you're strumming a G chord, you're like, can you just immediately start singing in G or E or D? Well, some people can, some people can't. But if you get a guitar or some type of tuning fork, or if you get a, I think it's called a metrodome, and you're trying to stay along with the beat, you can. So don't ever um, get to the point where you don't take these calls, whether it's a slate, a, a glass, or a box, and use it as a tuning fork. So if you don't have the proper video to go back and listen to, I do advise, man, come back and listen to all this. If there's a place that I'm yelping and you want to try to listen to it and compare it to your yelp and try and get that high low but outside of the video you have it in your hands you have this call that's giving you the perfect take that call You can take this call and help you master this difficult call in this diaphragm because you got the ultimate tuning fork. And even if I get lost or tone deaf, I can always go back to my favorite friction call to get me back in line with a tougher call to manipulate in my mouth call. So when it comes to turkey calling, I could talk and spend hours and hours because I'm so passionate about it. But whether you're trying to convince a judge you know, and win a grand national championship, or more importantly, you're trying to trick old long spurred turkey or over and big old two-year-old, remember it's not calling. When you're making yelps, cutting, clucks, and purrs, remember when we have a conversation, are we really thinking about what we say? We are, but we're not thinking like, okay, there's a dude, there's a lady, I need to say hello. Do we say what's up? Do we say hello? How are you doing? What's up, girl? What's up, dude? It becomes a conversation. It becomes a part of our personality. So here's the beauty of turkey calling. You can become whatever you want to be. You can become a naughty little aggressive hen based on if you think that this turkey you're working is something that's going to be manipulated easy. You can be the soft, subtle hen who is trying to talk to that subordinate gobbler that you feel like is not gobbling much and he's pretty nervous about coming in because he's worried about another turkey coming upside his head, you know, with some spurs. You can also become the very girly girl, let me fit into this flock with the other hens. So just like when we speak, depending on the location and what we're doing, no different than I'm trying my best to relay in proper fashion, even though I know because I'm country as cornbread, I'm going to say something wrong. I'm trying to convey this in a professional way. So I'm trying to think about what I'm saying and convey it precisely and clearly versus if we're out there around a campfire talking with our buddies and telling jokes and high-fiving, talking slang and talking whatever proper thing that we want to talk or improper, you know, it's no different than our kids back around, what's the cool word? Is this dude sus? 
Is he woke? Is he this? Is he that? YOLO? It all becomes part of the slang. So what I would advise you is remember when you're working a turkey, it's no different than us communicating right now. The difference is I'm speaking in English. I would say a southern slang type of English. But in this case, this is a whole other language. It's not French. It's not Spanish. It's not German. This is turkey vocabulary. And in that vocabulary, the only thing that remains, you have a certain cadence and rhythm. Even when a turkey scratches, think of this. You hear people scratching around in the leaves. Sound like an armadillo. Remember when a turkey scratches, it's usually one, one, two, one, two, three. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Think about that. That's a terrible sound effect. But even when a turkey scratches, there's a rhythm to it. So think about the rhythm. When it comes to excitement or the subtleness or the tone, you can become who you want to become because you learn the turkey language. Now, when you get to that level where you're not even thinking about if you're yelping or cutting or purring or clucking, you're talking to this no different than you're talking to your father, than your mother, to your wife, or to your kid. When you get to that point of being able to understand the turkey language and it becomes that easy to you and that subtle and that quick, you're going to start having plenty of turkeys and you better have many states you can hunt because you're going to be filling tags a lot. <laughs> well, there's a lot of opinion and there's a lot of calls and there's a lot of choices we can make when we're trying to make turkey sounds. But in the end, I hope this helps you, you know, understand a little bit what it means to me and what's helped me be successful as a turkey caller. And keep in mind, please comment because we want to learn. I'm still learning. We all are still learning. And there's so many people watching that have so much that they can share with all of us that we can become better, not just turkey calls, but turkey hunters. But um, I hope this helps a little bit. And it certainly helps me to be able to get it out, man, because I'm telling you, I would rather talk turkey than I talk English. I just love it. And I hope you find the same love and uh, good luck to everybody out there. And don't forget, leave your comment, give us your opinion, give us your way and what you think about this.